Hey YouTubers, this video is in response to um, some of the responses that I got from my video where I said give me some topics that you want to hear about. One of the ones that was most common was what's your development process, how do you develop film, that sort of thing. So this is the first installment uh, in a little series I'm going to do on film development. What I'm going to show you is what I do, it's kind of like they say. There's the wrong way, there's the right way, and there's my way. So I'm not saying here this is the right stuff to use, the only stuff to use, it's the only store you should buy your stuff at, none of that. This is what I do. I'm just giving you a window into uh, the equipment I use, which is what this video is about. So, to get started. To develop film, you're going to need water. Uh, I tend to use distilled water for certain parts of my process. I won't get into that now, I'll get into it when I actually do a development uh, video. This is about equipment and supplies. Uh, I buy distilled water at the local store. I'll buy a couple, three gallons at a time. And I also keep some tap water on hand. The reason I store my water is because I'm a simplistic kind of guy and I don't want to have to uh, use a thermometer to um, make sure that I have the right temperatures. So I do all my development at room temperature, and I adjust my development to compensate for the temperature of the room, okay? So what's cool about this is I just leave these guys on the shelf, and I keep my handy-dandy thermometer around, so I know what temperature I'm developing at, so I can adjust my development accordingly. There are alternatives to this, of course. As I said, some people uh, use... Um, a temperature controlled uh, spigot or whatever you call it, I'm not really sure. Some people use a water bath, yada yada. I don't do it. I develop at room temperature. You need to be able to, to measure your water and your chemicals. You're going to need some graduates. Uh, what I have here is my number one graduate. This one I use to um, mix up my rodinol. Again, another video, and it's, you know, marked in milliliters, and you're going to use this scale all the time. You can see I have this one marked in a couple of places. So I use this one to mix my rodinol, actually to mix any chemicals, you know, it's, it's the right size, it's a, a liter. I also use it to um, measure my rinse water, my stop water, all that kind of stuff. This is a stirrer, and I use that to mix my rodinol or any other chemical that I happen to be using, fixer, etc. A funnel. Um, when you use your fixer, you end up pouring fixer back because you can reuse it. So you want to have a funnel to put into your fixer bottle so you can pour your um, fixer back in. And there's a bunch of uses for a, um, a filter. For example, you can put a coffee filter in this thing and filter out any particulates that show up in your um, chems that are reusable. What I do use a lot is this little graduate and I use this to mix my rodinol. And again, I don't know if you can see this, I've got the common measurements that I use marked off on this guy. So I use this constantly. You're going to want a bottle or some bottles to store mixed chemicals. I like these kind of bottles with a graduate down the side. Um, this, this holds my fixer and the fixer silver has started um, toning the graduate. So I'm leaning this bottle over and it looks like I've got 850 uh, milliliters. I don't. It's it's further down. So this has become almost useless. I need a new bottle because this, this thing has gotten darkened so much. But anyway, um, this is a good bottle. I like it a lot. You can write on it. Um, and I recommend that you write on it. You'll notice that my fixer has um, the time that I mixed it on there or the date that I mixed it. Uh, so you might want to buy three or four of these uh, just to have a couple as backups and depending on what kind of chemicals you mix up. Developer, um, you're going to need some sort of developer. I use Rodinol a lot. I also use Diafine. Um, I use Rodinol the most and I'll get a little more into actual developers in another video sometime. But uh, this is my go-to developer. It's very easy to mix up, use um, pretty much uh, you can't mess it up. Another chemical is uh, some sort of tension reducer to get rid of your uh, water droplets on the film. 
There's um, PhotoFlow, I believe. I think Kodak makes one. I think it's called PhotoFlow. And there's LFN. There's probably others. This is what I use. You just put one drop, maybe two, in in your final rinse, and that keeps you from getting droplet marks on your uh, film. A thermometer for when you really do need to measure a temperature. That doesn't happen very often, but certain chemicals like to be mixed at certain temperatures. Um, so it's useful then. Um, I tried using a thermometer early on to, you know, measure, get the water uh, coming out of the spigot just right and all that. Uh, it was too hard. I went to the room temperature method. But you probably might need one. How do you like that? You probably might. A developing tank. Basically two classes of developing tank. There's stainless steel uh, and there's plastic. I like the plastic one. That's just what I started out with. Uh, I, um, the, there are people you know who will fight you to the death that you need to use stainless steel and there are people who will fight you to the death you need to use plastic. Um, really what matters is what's inside and that's another giant religious argument in the photography world. Are you going to use a Patterson style reel, which is what this is? Or are you going to use a Hughes style reel, which is a stainless steel reel? The Patterson reels make it easy to wind the film on. And how easy it is varies with your level of competence with loading the film. So at first it may not seem very easy. In time it will become very, very easy. And I'll get into that when I actually make more detailed development video. I kind of recommend that you look into getting a larger tank than you need. If you're doing 35, you don't need a tank as big as the one I'm holding here. This is a medium format tank. However, the tank came with multiple um, reels. I could do two rolls of 35 millimeter in this if I want, or one roll of 120. Um, this is a very versatile setup, so maybe you might want to consider getting one of these off the top even though you're only going to develop one roll of film in the early days. Uh, you can expand later or do medium format later. So uh, I think I would recommend if you're starting out, get a tank this size. When you pull the film out of the tank, you need to be able to hang it up. These are specialty items for hanging film. One's light, one's heavy. You clip the film on this side and you clip this on the bottom. And that holds your film taut. You can use uh, alligator clips, you can use bulldog clips, you can use clothes pins. Um, it's up to you. These things are very handy. When it comes time to load your film onto your developing reel and put it in the tank, you need to have total darkness. And there's a couple of options there. Here's your first option. Changing bag. Kind of looks like a t-shirt. Anyway, you put your stuff in on one end, you put your arms in on the other, and you, uh, in theory, you load up your uh, reel inside of this thing. Uh, I ran into big issues with this. I'm even in a dry climate, but I found it got very humid inside of this thing. So I don't use it. I, actually, I can't use it anymore because I got so pissed off once, I ruined the roll of film in this thing. It got so sticky, I couldn't get it loaded, and uh, let's just uh, leave it at that. Anyway, uh, it's got a hole in it now. Uh, but what I do use it for is to block off the bottom of my bathroom door and then I use gaffer's tape to block off the cracks around the door. And I'm good to go and I just load my film in my, what I call my dark bathroom. Okay, so uh, there you have it. That's the equipment that I use to develop my film. In a later video, I'll talk about how I use this equipment and I'll actually develop a roll of film and show you how it's done. So, as always, thanks for watching, stay tuned, and uh, I'll catch you later.